Here we go. Time to test the resources of ancient Sheba as well as those gifts presented at the same time by Solomon's navy. Once again, you will see this leads to the same place. Welcome to 100 Clues. The Philippines is the ancient land of gold, known as Ophir in the Bible and history. No, it's no fable, and this has already been proven in full in the God Cultures Solomon's Gold series. At the request of many viewers, we have pulled out 100 compelling clues, really proofs or evidences from this research in which we will highlight briefs of the most compelling points. And yes, there are over 100. These videos are for those who have not had time to watch Solomon's Gold series and easy to share to friends and family, especially skeptics. This brief video cannot replace that 50 video series nor even the rest of this series. So, if you haven't viewed it, go back and view it, but it will be very effective nonetheless. So go to Solomon's Gold series for the full evidence and full research, but now, part 36 of our series, 100 Clues, The Philippines is Ophir, one clue at a time. Back to the story, and she gave the king an hundred and twenty talents of gold, and of spices, very great store, and precious stones. There came no more such abundance of spices as these, which the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. And the navy also of Hiram, that brought gold from Ophir, brought in from Ophir great plenty of almond trees and precious stones. Remember, these abundant spices had never been seen in Israel before in such abundance. And Israel dealt with Ethiopia and the Sabaeans, or Yemen, a modern name. Also, these trees are of foreign origin, foreign to both of those places as well. Now, let's test the resources. Remember that the gold alone was 168 million U.S. dollars today in value. And when one adds Solomon's journeys every three years to Ophir for gold, especially $588 million each time, he secured, along with his gift from the Queen of Sheba, about $12 billion of gold from Ophir in his 40-year reign. However, we have record that even Egypt was not capable of such an output of gold as it only produced $2 billion in 20 years worth of gold. During Queen Hatshepsut's era, just before Solomon's, so very close and very appropriately applied. So that would only be $4 billion U.S. dollars over Solomon's reign. That's only one-third of what Solomon brought from Ophir. Thus, even Egypt was not capable of so much gold, and it was connected to Ethiopia and the Sabaeans and trade routes of Yemen. Thus, only a false narrative would even bring any of these lands into this narrative. It's disproven so many ways. They find a cave in Ethiopia, for instance, that they do not even enter, nor even prove has gold, and assume it was an ancient gold mine of Sheba, the Queen of Sheba. Wait till you see this. And yet, they did not even bother to remove the rocks that cover the entrance and enter the cave, nor test anything. But this gets reported in national and international media as finding the gold mine of Shiva. Wrong. Now, it may be an ancient gold mine, maybe, and maybe not, but even the city that is near it is dated long after the Queen of Sheba. So even if it is a gold mine, it still doesn't work. So, are these resources in the story, in the narrative of the Queen of Sheba and Solomon's Navy, are they all native to the Philippines, just as Ophir and Tarshish's were? Well, let's test and see. The answer is yes. End of video. Teasing. First, the queen brought spices. 
The Hebrew word used here is labona, which is interpreted generally as spices, but sometimes as frankincense, which is rather odd since frankincense is actually an old French word long after Bible times. But let's go for it here. We're told the biblical frankincense only comes from a tree in Ethiopia and nowhere else on earth. Of course, wonder how much of those farms actually the rabbis might have ownership equity. Hmm. You will find that often. So does the Philippines possibly have a frankincense? Well, actually, it has what is termed poor man's frankincense. Not because it is lower in quality, but because it's cheaper as its price is not driven up by the rabbi claims. This is why many perfume companies actually buy their frankincense from the Philippines. Yet, yeah, go read their label. It still says frankincense. Hmm. It's frankincense, and no, it does not only originate in Ethiopia. That is a massive fraud in modern times. It comes from the Manila LME tree. And let's take that even further in part 12c of Solomon's Gold Series. We actually test every biblical spice we can find in scripture and even extra biblical text. And guess what? Every one originates in the Philippines natively. There was only one that was questionable, and that's because it's a lost reference and no one knows exactly what it is today. But we're confident that's in the Philippines too. Spices, check. Then there's gold, which we have already proven fully. The Philippines has been mining gold in a gold rush status since 1000 BC and still remains number two in untapped gold deposits in the ground even today, even though it's only 300,000 square kilometers in size. Wow, no contest. Then the Queen of Sheba offered precious stones and you would be surprised how many people are ignorant of this one as well as several we have proven out already. Because they're just unaware of the resources of the Philippines and even when you look at a lot of these maps, the Philippines doesn't make the map, but it has the resource. We'll show you in a minute, a huge one, massive oversight that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Now there's a resource list from 2018 that shows agate, amethyst, calcite, garnet, hematite, jade, pearl, pyrite, quartz, and sphalerite. However you say that. <laughs> and that's just one list. There's several others. The Philippines certainly has gemstones or precious stones. Some would say, oh, well on that list, there's some that are considered semi-precious stones. Okay, go find that in history. When did they start using the term semi-precious stones? I assure you, not in the Bible. That is for sure. Nor did they in the times that the Spanish came and called these precious stones. Many times over in their writings, which we've actually already covered. And even the UN on their website lists the Philippines as a source for pearls and precious stones to this day. All native and check once again. Now let's look at the offerings from Hiram Solomon's admiral at the same time as the Queen of Sheba. Note, same time, same resources. Now we'll skip Almug for the second, but we'll be right back to it and we'll do that last. Gold, check. We already know that. Precious stones, check. We already know that. When one looks into all the articles and Bible encyclopedias, no one knows exactly what this wood is though, algum wood or almug wood in Chronicles. It's both ways or whichever way, almug, algum. But it's the only time it's used in the Bible is this one time in Kings and one time in Chronicles. That's it, both in relation to what Solomon's navy brought back from Ophir, Sheba and Tarshish. Now, many of the Bible encyclopedias do say, however, that due to the descriptions of the temple pillars being red, a red wood, that this is a red sandalwood. Go look that up 
and they'll show you distribution maps showing India is the source of red sandalwood, but not the Philippines. No, the Philippines doesn't have red sandalwood. But see, is that true? See, we have a massive problem with that kind of, sorry, fraud. The Philippines does not just have red sandalwood. It's the national tree! Huh. You've got to be kidding me. Also, this tree has a resin used for incense, thus a source for spices even. Matching up all three resources that the Queen of Sheba gave to the same ones brought by Solomon's navy. How about that? In the Philippines, they call this tree Nara, which is awfully odd, as this word Nara sure seems to be of Hebrew origin and actually ties to this narrative of the Queen of Sheba. Same word, Nara. Imagine that. Nara in Hebrew means she who must be admired. And whom else could this be talking about? Right in the middle of her own story than the Queen of Sheba herself. The wealthiest woman possibly of all time. It just so happens Nara has incense resin as well and is good for construction. One of the best woods actually as it is moisture and termite resistant. In fact, good for musical instruments. Gee, this is sounding just like the uses that Solomon used it for and even boat making as it is resistant to seawater, salt water even. Gee, since Adam and Eve lived in the Philippines, and so did their generations all the way through to Noah, other than Cain, the evil who migrated to the east, would this not mean Noah built the ark there? Was Solomon traveling to acquire the gold and spices from Adam's first sacrifice and the very wood used to build Noah's ark, Nara? We believe so. Watch our gopher wood video for more on that. Okay, so we've now tested all of the resources of all of Solomon's Navy's narratives from Ophir, Tarshish, and Sheba. And we now have a 100% match where Ethiopia and Yemen were already out of the running a long time ago. Add to that the resources we tested from ancient Havila, which the Philippines does not just have natively, but is number one in all three on all of Earth. We're talking about a reference from thousands of years ago to the Philippines. And you know what? So is Sheba. How is this even a discussion, folks? This is proven, not theories, not speculative, versus all the others who don't even have a case in the slightest. Amazing. As we keep saying and supporting over and over again, there is no debating. The Philippines is the land of gold in all of history. It is time this knowledge be restored for those about to come in in ignorance. Yep, we always get them. We dare you to watch Solomon's Gold series by The God Culture, the original channel, to prove the Philippines is in fact Ophir no matter how many try to copy us. Even here, we are breaking these into sound bites and clear points, but watch how all 100 clues tie together in the series will blow you away. Thank you for watching 100 Clues. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the bell and like us on our new Facebook, The God Culture Space hyphen space original. If you wish to skip ahead, go to the God Culture YouTube channel and watch our Solomon's Gold series in English or Tagalog. There will be a link on the next screen, and we've also released the first, I believe, five Tagalog videos of 100 Clues at this point, and we intend to do them all in Tagalog as well. We can know this truth and be confident this belongs to the Philippines and no one else, and no one can disprove it, and we challenge them. We dare them to try. Until next time.